Hello, my name is Eric, and I'm a network specialist here at Google Cloud. In this demo, we built a data path between VPCs by configuring each VPC as an NCC spoke. We'll use a multi-tier application architecture to illustrate some key NCC concepts. A common design practice may use different VPCs to segment a multi-tier application. Cloud architects can use this approach to reduce risk in one layer of the stack from impacting the others during changes and updates. And using VPC or projects to segment an application stack creates a demarcation that helps the right resources to quickly isolate and to fix any issues. In the interest of time, we've pre-built some of the network components that we will be using in the demo. By the end of this, we would have configured a fully meshed data path between all VPCs. The console shows pre-configured VPCs that NCC will interconnect. We'll create a global route table to store all VPC subnet routes by creating an NCC hub. And in this demo, I'm naming this new hub as NCC-hub. On the same configuration page, this allows me to configure a VPC as a spoke. And this is helpful to me as I will be configuring VPC1 and VPC4 as NCC spokes to the NCC hub. When this step is completed, we should see our NCC hub routing table be populated with VPC1 and VPC4 subnets. NCC hub supports all valid IPv4 ranges except for the privately used public IP addresses. So far, both our VPC spokes and our NCC hub belongs to the same project. Network Connectivity Center can support other VPCs as spokes from a different project. This allows other project owners to participate in the same routing domain, all while maintaining their own administrative autonomy. To demonstrate this, we'll switch to a new GCP project. On the NCC configuration page, we configure this project with the name of our hub, and we specify the project ID where that hub resides. And we will name this spoke cross project spoke, and we'll configure VPC1 from this new project as an NCC spoke. Upon creating a new spoke, the NCC Hub admin will have the opportunity to review the cross-project spokes request to join our hub. The new spoke will only become active once our NCC Hub admin approves the request. Okay, here we've switched back to the project that's hosting our hub. We can see the new VPC request wants to join the hub. We drill down into the hub to find the new spoke and we can either accept or reject the request. If we choose to reject the request, we can provide a brief explanation for the rejection. But instead, we'll accept and confirm the activation of the new cross project spoke. Once the new cross project spoke becomes active, we should see the subnets from cross project VPC1 in the hub's routing table. In this next part of the demo, we'll see how NCC checks for overlapping IP ranges from different subnets. VPC2 and VPC3 has both been pre-configured with an overlapping IP range of 10.3.3.0/24. We'll watch what happens when we configure both VPC2 and VPC3 as new spokes to join our hub. Network Connectivity Center checks for overlapping subnets from all spokes. If it detects an overlap, it will fail new VPC spoke creation with an error. The error message tells us subnet 10.3.3.0 in VPC3 overlaps with VPC2. To resolve this error, we'll need to exclude the overlapping 10.3.3.0 IP range from both VPC2 and VPC3 from being exported into the NCC hub routing table. We navigate to the spoke configuration page like we did before, only this time we enter the overlapping IP range that will be excluded from being exported into the hub's routing table.
This time, the hub should accept VPC2 and VPC3S spokes, and we can see the spoke status as active. And if we drill into the NCC hub's routing table, we should only see VPC2 and VPC3 subnets that were not excluded. Let's visualize what we've configured so far. We have five VPCs configured as NCC spokes that is attached to our NCC hub. Our VPCs are pre-configured with firewall rules that allows traffic between all subnets. In this part of our demo, we will use Cloud Shell to set up private NAT between VPCs. Here, I've already logged into Cloud Shell. In VPC2, we create an IP subnet dedicated for NAT. Next, we create the cloud router in VPC in the same region as our virtual machine. We'll configure the cloud router to translate VPC2's overlapping 10.3.3.0 slash 24 subnet. Finally, we'll create a NAT rule that will source NAT the overlapping IP range if the traffic takes an NCC hub route. Logging out of Cloud Shell and switching to our web interface, we should see our private NAT configuration represented on the console. Note that dynamic port allocation is enabled by default. Let's test NCC's data path. The web server in VPC1 is configured with TCP dump to listen for traffic source from VPC4 subnet 10.4.4.0/24. We'll use ping to verify the data path by initiating an echo request from VM4 in VPC4 to the web server on VPC1. And if we use a curl command on VM4 to validate web connectivity to the web server, we should expect to see bidirectional traffic between the two hosts. Next, let's test our private NAT config. We'll log on to PNAT VM that resides on VPC2's overlapping subnet. On our web server, we'll configure TCP dump to listen for traffic source from the NAT pool range of 10.10.10.0/29. Note the host IP on PNAT VM. This IP address belongs to the range that has been excluded from the NCC hub route table. When we establish a web request from the PNAT VM host, we should see the web request come through on the web server using a translated IP address. Network connectivity support for VPC as a spoke and private VPC NAT is now publicly available for testing. Different tiers of the application stack that was once segmented by VPC and projects can now use NCC Hub to orchestrate full network connectivity. If you have any questions, reach out to your friendly neighborhood Google Cloud customer engineer. Thanks for watching.